one shucking joke that whole time. <laughs> I've heard them all. Shuck in hell. Take me home and shuck me. Shuck me, suck me, eat me raw. That was a t-shirt at one point. That was a bad idea. Turns out shucks sounds like another word that everyone really likes. And there's a lot of really funny people who put those two things together. I'm Chris Sherman from Island Creek Oysters. Today we're going to learn how to shuck and eat oysters and clams. We'll show you the tools that you need, uh, the methodology, how to pick out the right shellfish, really all with the goal of eating more shellfish at home. To shuck is simply to remove the top shell of the oyster and separate the meat from the bottom shell. Beautiful thing about shellfish is they're actually served on their own little plate, their shell. Uh, so you want to leave them in there when they're going on the raw bar. We'll start with picking the shellfish, um, starting with the oysters. So the things you want to look for in an oyster are uh, a nice deep cup. The other thing you can do is bang them together. You want them to sound like two rocks. You don't want to have a hollow kind of nutshell sound to it. The other thing you want to look for is the shape. You want a nice round shape uh, or maybe a teardrop shape if it's grown in gear. You don't want an oyster that's flat or bent or curved. Next, we'll talk about the tools of the trade. We use uh, what we call a shucking knife. It's a semi-sharp knife that you use to actually lever into the shell and pop that shell open. What you want to look for is a blade that's big enough for the task, right? If you have a really big oyster, you need to have a big, strong blade. If you have a really small, delicate oyster, you need to have a smaller, delicate blade. And you can see these oysters are pretty much medium size, medium sized knife. The other thing to look for is it's not a knife. You're not really like cutting anything. You, really what you're doing is you're getting in and you're separating the two shells. So you need it to have some qualities that your regular knife doesn't. It's got to be able to be torqued. It's got to have a nice, firm handle. If it's wooden, you want to have full tang, which means the blade goes all the way through the handle. With, with some rivets in there to hold it in place. Other things we've got on the table here, we've got gloves. So this is something that, it's like wearing a bike helmet. You should really do it. If you don't, it's not like insane. Uh, you can definitely shuck an oyster without gloves on, but certainly if you're a beginner, uh, it's great to have gloves. But these gloves are actually designed to prevent you from cutting yourself on the shell of the oyster. You find the point where the two shells connect. And for reference, it's generally the pointy end. You're gonna take your knife, and I like to choke up on the blade. So you wanna go in at an angle, you're not going in flat, like so, and you're not going in down at the hinge like that. It's really just about a 45 degree angle. And the twist and wiggle consists of finding the gap between the two shells, and then you're going to gently twist the knife back and forth like this, and wiggle it. What you wanna do is wait until you find the hinge give. And notice I don't stop twisting and wiggling, until I am actually into the oyster. And that is the angle that you want to go in at. So if you find yourself really trying to dig into it, you're doing something wrong. What we're gonna do is break the top shell away from the muscle. And the way we do that is to basically turn the knife blade perpendicular to the shell. And you see that creates more space. Now, this is the part where a lot of people screw it up. They think you need to cut through the muscle like a knife blade. And really what you're doing is it's more like peeling a potato or an apple or something like that. You're gonna keep the knife at a slight angle and grind it up along the top shell and just clear that muscle away. And you can take two or three passes to make double sure, but ultimately you want a nice clean top shell that doesn't have any meat dangling from it. So now is the crucial part where we're actually going to separate the oyster from the bottom or the cup side down of the shell. And again, we're gonna mimic the motion that we did on the top shell. You're not going in and trying to cut it away. You're just taking your thumb again and kind of clearing it off the bottom shell. And there you have it. Now you want to plate the oyster. It's really important that you have something on your plate to make sure that the oyster doesn't tip over. One of the worst things is when you get served an oyster that's been pre-shucked like an hour or two before you eat it, and it's been put on a cookie sheet or on a regular plate, and it tips over, and what happens is all the liquor dumps out. Uh, so what we've done here is we are using kosher salt just to create a little bed on our plate, and then the oyster sits nicely. Other things you can use are crushed ice or really anything that provides support. Shucking injuries do happen. When I'm shucking, the knife will skip out from the hinge, and this part of my hand right here is like a pin cushion. I have five or six scars from the knife just going into that meaty part of your thumb. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. And I've had some really weird moments where I literally have to put my hand up and say, is there a doctor in the crowd? And I'm getting triage done in the lobby of some hotel by a surgeon who's had four or five glasses of wine. The other thing is when you do kind of skip out of the hinge, 
your knuckles end up hitting the shell and you get cut. And you can actually see I've got like probably 15 or 20 scars from all the times I've gouged it on the oyster shell. Last piece of protection that we've got, particularly for beginners, is this side towel. Is you can put the oyster into the side towel like so. And what this does is it prevents the knife, if you skip out of the shell, it prevents the knife from really going into your hand and adds a layer of protection. So you put in the towel with the hinge sticking out and then you're going in. Same deal. And then you unwrap it, pop it open. Cut that muscle right out. Now the oysters are shucked. The important part is that you eat them. And a lot of people think, particularly people who are new to oysters, think you just dump it down your gullet and try to swallow it as fast as you possibly can. But these things are not cheap and you just spend 10 minutes opening all of them. So you wanna make sure you savor the experience. Essential part of eating any oyster is getting an actual shot of salt water from the place where it was grown. You're literally sipping Duxbury Bay water down here in Brooklyn or out in San Francisco or Austin or Chicago, wherever you may be eating these things. One of the important things about savoring it is, uh, is to chew it. It also kind of unlocks all the rest of the flavor in the oyster. And if you savor it for three or four or five seconds before you actually swallow it, that's how you can actually get into oyster eating. And that I think is one of the powerful things about oysters is that no matter where you are, you're getting a little bit of taste of the geography of where it came from. The rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. How to know when you've got an oyster that's poorly stuck. This is a good one because it's dry. <laughs> this is an oyster that is poorly shucked. And to me, it is astounding that someone can put something like this on your plate for $3.50 at a restaurant. Basically, you want to look for it with an oyster that has been absolutely butchered is it should look like scrambled eggs or something that's already been into your stomach and come up. And the only way to do that is to butcher it, like I said. And a lot of people do when they're cutting the adductor muscle. You know, they, they do it once and the oyster is still attached to the shell. So they do it again and again and again. But basically, you get this really nasty oyster goop. You don't have to settle for poorly shucked oysters. Condiments and oysters, things that enhance the flavor. You can squeeze a little bit of lemon on there. It does a really nice job of adding a nice kind of familiar citrus note. The other thing you can add, you can add this with the lemon, is hot sauce. And the, the heat actually goes really nicely with the lemon. Uh, so if you really want to mask the flavor, but not to the cocktail sauce level, lemon and the hot sauce is a really great option. Medianette is the classic French answer to cocktail sauce. Uh, but all it basically is, is vinegar and shallots. So you don't want to take an entire teaspoon of mignonette. A little dab will do you. Horseradish is something that people ask for all the time. I like it, but again, it kind of just reminds me of cocktail sauce. Uh, and we hate cocktail sauce, so we don't really use a lot of horseradish. But I do not hold a grudge against people that use horseradish alone. We're going next level condiment. Uh, here we have two different types of caviar conveniently sold by Island Creek Oysters. And caviar is great on its own, obviously, but putting them on top of oysters is pretty much as good as it gets. That is just about everything you probably cared to or could ever need to know about oysters. Now we're gonna move on to clams. To make a mental note of is you need to switch knives when you're shucking clams. Believe it or not, there's a different knife to shuck clam than there is for an oyster. Uh, how are they different? One thing is that there's one side of this knife that has actually got a sharp edge. So this one you need to be careful of in a different way because it can slice you, uh, whereas the oyster knife you're really digging in. Uh, but this sharp edge is really important because as opposed to the oyster, you're actually gonna go in through the bill of the clam. Now we wanna get into this. Something to remember about the clams is that the shells are not as durable as the oysters. So one of the many reasons why this is a little bit more of a delicate process than shucking the oyster. The other thing to remember is that it's kind of a pain in the butt because the clams have two adductor muscles. So we're gonna have to cut them both from the top and the bottom. So that's four cuts in total. But priority number one A is getting in between the shells. You can find there's a tiny little line right here. You can barely see it with all the other lines that are on the clam shell. But if you take your finger along it and just kind of clean it up, you can see it better. And you're gonna take 
the fine edge, the sharp edge of your clam knife, and you're going to find that little gap. And then you're going to put it in your hand like this, and you take the fat edge of the knife that's not in the clam, and you just squeeze. And then the knife ends up in between the two shells. So once you're in, I do a little bit of a twist, but you're going to take the top edge of the clam knife and get the inside adductor muscle. Because what you don't want to do is if you just go in with the whole blade, you'll actually just cut up the clam meat, which we're going to try to leave it as intact as possible. And then once you've got the two adductor muscles cut, then it's a little bit more like the oyster game, where you slide it all the way back and pop that shell open. And this is the point at which if you have left any meat, luckily I did it right, so I didn't. If it's still attached in any way, when it's partially open, you can kind of go in and just clear the rest of whatever piece of the clam is still stuck to the top shell. You can cut the hinge, you can just break it off, chuck the top shell. You've got two more cuts to make. And here you can actually see, these are the two adductor muscles. They're pink and they're much smaller than the muscle in the oyster. And then it's very easy at this point, obviously, once the top shell is off, you're just taking your knife, sliding it under the clam. You've got this nice sharp blade here and separating it. Here we can do a flip as well to make it really look good in case you have made any cuts with the knife. And there you have it. That is a clam that's ready to eat right off the raw bar. One thing to remember about tasting clams is that they don't necessarily have all of the flavor nuance that oysters do, but they do have quite a bit of difference from, say, Massachusetts to Virginia you know, kind of broader strokes regionality, but the clams have a more bitter flavor. They've got this nutty uh, kind of walnut oil bitter flavor to them. They're really, really nice, obviously with salt and a little bit of a sweet finish. Maybe you went to the store, you don't want to run right home and start shucking and need to store these things for a while. General rule of thumb is you want to keep them cold, not freezing, because if you freeze them, you will probably kill them. Uh, so you want to keep them just in your refrigerator. You can have them up to about 45 degrees. The other thing is keep them damp. Uh, so you don't want to put ice into the bowl with the shellfish. And then the oyster will most likely start to try to filter that fresh water and that will kill them. What you can do is you can just take a dish towel or even a paper towel if it's not going to be too long and just wet it so it's damp. And then you just put it over the bowl like so. And that will keep them nice and damp and so they don't dry out. So they're portable, they keep well, uh, they're really in many ways convenient, and now that you know how to shuck, you can show off for your friends and family at dinner.